YouTube, it's Jessie Lee, and call me hashtag Boss Lee, and I hope you love the video you're about to see. I'm pretty sure you will, because it's always content over here. I want to tell you about a couple other things, specifically one that you can also get some more value from, and all you need to do, and you can do it now, just pause this video, is go ahead and text YouTube to 844-277-9762. I'm going to be really upping the text game, and it's literally me texting you back. So if you want to have a more one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, enjoy the video, subscribe, comment below, and make sure you text YouTube again to 844-277-9762. There's a lot of people that are taking the action and they're doing the thing, but they have negative thoughts and feelings driving the actions. Mm. And what, what, what we learn is this, negative thoughts and feelings will create negative results 100% of the time in your life. So if you're going through the motions and you're not seeing the results, it's because you have negative thoughts and limiting beliefs that are dictating what you're doing. And your external results will always be a reflection of the thoughts and beliefs that you have about yourself in your mind. If you don't believe you can be successful, if you don't think you deserve it, um, you'll never achieve the results that you want. So, so what we have to do, we have to get to the level of, of our thinking and our thoughts. And that's where leadership has become my passion. Because look, I, I've been coaching and training for almost four years now. I started out like most people, doing mostly social media. And look, there's a lot of like, so I'm not, I'm not saying social media is not important. It's absolutely important. There are tons of people out there. You know, we, we, we were talking about Frazier before, Frazier, a good friend of mine. There's tons of people out there, you, that do amazing social media training. But what I've identified is there's a need in this profession of something else that I think is the real root cause of people's lack of results. And it's their mindset about their business. Cause that's what leadership is. Leadership is an inside out game. And I always talk about leadership and then people are like, but Bob, I'm not a leader. I don't have a team. I'm like, well, that's your problem. Because you're a leader the day you sign into your business, whether you realize it or not. And if you're not seeing results, it's because you haven't yet learned how to lead the most important person you will ever lead, which is yourself. And leading yourself starts with you learning how to manage two important things in your business, fear and overwhelm because they will be the biggest obstacles that you will ever have in your success. If you don't learn how to manage fear and your mind, and you don't know how to learn how to manage overwhelm, you're never going to create results in this business. And we teach our students, we have a framework where the end goal for, for our students is freedom, but it, we take it a step further. We talk about something called total freedom. Total freedom is made up of three different freedoms. Financial freedom and time freedom, these are the ones that you hear talked about a lot. But there's a third that I think is actually more important. I think it's the most important, and that's personal freedom. And personal freedom is you learning how to master your own mind. And what I have learned through my own experience and through working with many, many other people, you will never be totally free until you master your own mind, until you learn how to deal with the things like everything we're talking about switching love. This is mastering your own mind. And this is the starting point for people is working from there. So what helped you shift through that? Cause you were saying you were dealing with worthiness stuff. You said, you know, all, and I know bits of your life now, obviously, I don't know every, no one knows everything. Right. But, um, what really started shifting for you and what do you think started calling you towards this, this mindset, uh, control is not the right word, but kind of is the mindset approach to everything. Yeah. So I've always been a student. I've been a lifelong student. Um, I understand that um, there are people out there that know things I don't that can help me. And I got to a point in my business where I got so frustrated because I was doing everything I was supposed to do. I was going to the trainings. I was, you know, I, all of the doing side of things, like I was doing everything, but it still wasn't really making a difference in my life. And I, out of frustration, I started just being curious and, and, find out what else was out there. And I had to look outside of the network marketing training that I was being given. And I started to become a, a, a student of the psychology of success and, and leadership in general. And what, what I started to learn was, and I remember probably one of the first things that I read that was a big wake up call to me was this um, quote that success is not a matter of doing, it's a matter of being. It's who you are in your business right? And who you are being, that's leadership. And leadership starts 
with your thoughts and your beliefs about yourself. And what I started to realize as I went down this kind of road of, of, of understanding the internal game of success, what I realized through doing a lot of these exercises and reading books is that I had these limiting beliefs that I had developed early in my life that were holding me back. I'll tell you one of them, and this, I think this might be really impactful for some people that might have these same issues. So most of our beliefs are formed by the time we're eight years old. We actually, we teach beliefs, like uh, how to reshape beliefs in our program. Most of the beliefs that you have, you have at an early age. And the one that usually is one of the most limiting is our relationship to money, right? Our money beliefs. And um, we all have a blueprint ar around money that uh, most of the time unconsciously keeps us from having it. And I actually developed a limiting belief early in life where I associated money with pain. My parents, um, they, well, I, I live in a middle-class household. My sister and I, we had what we wanted, but money was always an issue in my parents' life. And it was always a source of, of frustration. And I, I was very, I, I remember that, them sitting around the dinner table and having arguments about there never being enough money. One of, this is gonna sound so ridiculous, but this is how beliefs are formed. I used to have, I had this traumatic experience for myself where every single year, my parents would take me school shopping to Kmart. This is where we used to go school shopping for Kmart. And I was a nightmare to take school shopping because all I wanted was nice clothes. And my parents could only afford what we could afford. And they literally used to fight over who had to take me. And it was like a kicking, screaming match the whole time. And, and here's what I used to hear. This is every time my parents used to say this to me, you better work really hard when you grow up because you got rich people's taste. You better work really hard because you're going to have to make a lot of money. So here's what happened early in my life. I associated my parents are not bad people. You know, they were just fr I mean, imagine if you're dragging your kid around screaming for two hours, like what you would want to say to them. But here's what I did. I, I developed a limiting belief that the only way you could make money was by working hard. And, and, and that became an issue for me. And I associated pain with money. And I spent most of my life trying to keep money away from me unconsciously and for an attempt to keep pain away from me. Wow. Wow. Bob, wow. And I had a really bad relationship with money. I was bankrupt, didn't pay credit cards, got out of school, was an idiot, right? Like consciously, logically, I'm a smart person. I knew what I was doing, wasn't dumb. But your subconscious beliefs will always override logic. And here's the other area where this showed up. And this is where I know this is a belief that your listeners have. Yeah. I thought making money was a function of working hard. And yeah. there I was in my business. I was already working my butt off and not making money. And I started to develop this, limb, this, this internal resistance around success because I'm like, I'm already working hard. And if I want to get to Jesse Lee's level, how much harder am I going to have to work? How much more time am I going to have to put in? Because I thought money was a function of time and, and effort. And, and it, that held me back for years because I was like, am I willing to trade off what I want in life, my time freedom, my family for success. I felt like these two things were at odds. Yeah. And it wasn't until I realized that that was something that's holding me back and I changed that belief. And the belief that I changed it to was that working hard has nothing to do with making money. And I'll prove it to you. How many people in your life do you know that you work hard that don't make money or don't make a lot of money? See, what the belief that I adopted that changed my life is that Money is a function of two things. The amount of value that you have to offer to the world and the amount of people that you serve. And if you can learn how to add more value, isn't it interesting how it comes back to this idea of service? The more people that you can help, the more money you make. And it doesn't have to be a function of time. For me, it became live video. I just started helping a lot of people through live video, which only took me 30 minutes a day but it, trans, it transferred into thousands of people that I was helping every day. And that's how I built this business where, you know, today the greatest gift that I have is, is freedom in the sense that I don't believe that I have to trade off these different areas of my life. I know that I'm going to be able to be a great father and be there for my children and still be able to build and run a multiple seven figure business and not have those two things be at odds. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, I know I went on a little bit of tangent, but you asked the question, when did I make a change? It's when I actually realized that these were the things that have always been holding me back that I never even realized. I, I love that you said all of that. I think that the story, it's, it's amazing. I, I didn't know about the eight-year-old thing, but 
I had the same really unhealthy relationship with money. Kind of, I don't know about rich people taste, but I remember being told that I, you don't value everything. I can't wait for the day. You have to pay for your own shoes. Cause you just, you shove your foot in the shoe. And I'm like, what? You know, like yeah. we work so hard for this. And so it's crazy. Like yeah. those become and define who you are. And it really is what you said. I hope everybody wrote all of that down, but especially that, that the money, it, it, you're going to make more money based off the value you offer and the amount of people you serve. And both the two of us, same thing. When we both started, when I met you, we both had the same followers, I think, AKA none. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. My video didn't exist. And then when it popped on, you know, I remember both of us, it was constant lives, lives, lives. I don't know how many, I know you went live every day too. I went live for over 700 days straight. And that was my fastest way I could think of exposing myself. And it's not that I was good. It's not that you were great either. You know, N neither of us were polished live, you know, Facebook livers. Well, Periscope, remember we were Periscoping back then too. Periscoping and whatever mm -hmm. else. It's just that we were willing to do it because we knew we needed to serve. And so yep. if you can get past these limiting beliefs, and I will tell you from the podcast the other day, um, I believe it was Sarah Centrella's podcast. If you guys are listening to all the episodes, um, she was talking about we're going through deep, no, it was Brianna Deerdick, deep trauma work. Like a lot of us have deep trauma and mindset work to go through to understand that who our parents were is not us. Yeah. Who, who your stepdad was is not you. The beliefs that you have from your childhood, you don't have to put on your children. I, I'm, I'm obsessed that you mentioned the kind of father you get to be leading with love and with happiness and with joy because you get to help set the mindsets of another generation. And that's true legacy. That's yeah. true leadership, leading your household first. You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, people saying, oh, I'm not a leader. And the most important person you will ever lead is yourself. My God, Bob, it could not be more true. Like yeah. that's everything. Um, I think so many times people don't re realize this deep rooted stuff you're talking about and that you can change all of these little nuances that you don't like about yourself just by understanding that what people said you were is not necessarily who you have to be. Yeah. And I, and I would say this too, because I know this is the thing that- um, Uh-oh, is my internet? I don't know if that's me or you, but it's your froze. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I, I'll say this, because I know there's a lot of people that are like frozen with fear right now. They're afraid to go live. They're afraid to reach out. I'll just- I'll just tell them to understand that any moment that you're feeling stuck and frozen and fearful, it's just because you're focusing on yourself. That's all. A, a, a simple shift from yourself to someone else. And it's, it's impossible to get stuck with fear if you're really genuinely focused on helping someone else. And whether that's just letting them know you care, sharing a piece of information, maybe you learned something on this podcast that was like one of those like, wow, I need to process that moments, share that with someone else. You know, anytime you're fearful, you're being selfish in a sense because you're just worried about how it's going to affect you. And so if we get outside of ourselves, if we can acknowledge the fact that you want to know what, I might not have all the results in the world, but here's the interesting thing about service. You don't need 10,000 people in your downline to serve somebody. You don't need to be making six figures to share something with someone that can impact someone else. And I'll just invite you to consider that maybe it's your unwillingness to do these things that's actually keeping you from the six figures and the 10,000 people that you want. And the more that you have faith, and for me, you know, part of this conversation for me, being a person of faith, where I had, you asked what changed for me, I had to finally realize that my unwillingness to acknowledge my own worth was really nothing more than a smack in my creator's face. Because I know I was created in God's image. And I know God doesn't create junk. And when I had to admit that to myself and say, get over yourself, Bob, and get out there and start sharing the gifts that you had inside of you. Because look, I, one of my worst fears my whole life was public speaking. It wasn't until I got into network marketing and started actually putting myself out there, I realized I had this gift inside of me. And I never would have discovered that if it wasn't for my ability to show up and serve and focus on other people. So I, my message to people listening, you can do this. This is a call to leadership. This is one of the greatest opportunities you will ever have in your life to let the world know that you are a leader. And if you practice what I'm teaching you here, this love, serve, grow, you will begin to set in motion a legacy for your life.
that will be incredible. Look, I'm, I'm fully aware that the, 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 the majority of the impact that I make through the work I do today, I will not see in my lifetime. The, my legacy, I will not realize my, in my lifetime, I will not see the full impact of the work that I do because we're creating a new generation of leaders in this profession and the ripple effect that that's going to have in the world, children's children. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just, that's the thing that gets me so excited is the difference that we can make individually. And if you think you don't matter, it does. That one person matters. Every little thing you do, right? Contributing to, to, to spreading positivity, it all matters. So step up and do it. I love that. Especially that if you think it doesn't matter, it does. It's that one person. It's not the 10,000 and you'll get to the 10,000 when you focus on the one. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the irony of it. You don't, but going back to the relationships, you're not going to make 10,000 great relationships this afternoon, mm -mm. but can you start with one? Can you take one thing that Bob talked about today and go tell somebody you're grateful for them? Don't ever sell, don't sell to them. Don't offer the business opportunity. And especially the time, right? Like right now he's talking about fear be the hope dealer, be the person that people know, you know, I love this concept and I don't know that I've talked about it ever on this podcast, but in a, in a normal day at sea, in a normal day at sea, a lighthouse is just a pretty house. Mm. It's just a pretty house with a light on, who cares? But in times when there are storms and times when the waves are rough and times when it is, it is rough out there, like maybe right now it is for some of you, be the lighthouse. Be the light that calls people home. Be the light that shows people there's hope. Be the light that says, it's not all darkness. I promise I'm still here. I can be the light. And I love that you mentioned, you know, God doesn't create junk. I love that. I love that so much because I feel so much of the time, and maybe you're the same with this. I feel like half the time it's not me speaking. I feel like he's speaking through me. I'm like, I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> don't know where it's coming from. But I feel like that's how you know you're called to do something is yeah. when you're just so drawn to something and it's unexplainable and you just, you have to do it. And if you're being called to your business, don't rest on your laurels. Understand it can be something a little bit, you know, it can, it can be the little pivot. Like yeah. Bob was talking about the pivot to, Hey, you know what? I'm being called to coach or, Hey, I'm being called to step into this. Hey, I'm being called to do more relationships. I'm being called to love, to serve, to grow. Like Bob said, and you need to follow that intuition because that is your divine guidance. I yeah. truly wholeheartedly believe that. And I think that right now, if we're not focused so much on the fear, but instead on, instead of, instead of focusing on the fear, we're focused on the hope. Yeah. What can we do? It's like you said 20 minutes ago or something. This will be one of the defining moments of, of our lives. Yep. This Corona quarantine, whatever you want to call it, COVID-19, this is an opportunity to create that legacy. Like you just said, is you're, you're not going to see it in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's going to live out through generations and generations and generations through your sons that are currently born and then generations that are not yet born. Yeah. Can I share one more quick analogy that I think is powerful? Yeah. Cause I love this. I love, I love this call for being the light. Cause I think it's totally true. Like our, our opportunity to be different today is to do that is to share messages of positivity and hope and love and give, give without the expectation of getting in return. That's what love does. Not conditional giving. Like when's the sale going to come? And, you know, there's this great analogy that I heard that when I think about being the light, I immediately think about people listening to this and questioning whether they have the light inside of them. Mm. Well, I don't just, I don't know if I can be a light. Here's what I want you to, here's a great analogy. It's like a blue sky. The sky is always blue. It's the sky is never not blue. It is what it was created to be, but sometimes it appears to not be blue when there are clouds over it. It appears to be gray when we look at it, when there are clouds. I look out my window right now, it's rainy. It looks gray, but the sky is still blue. We just don't see it. And the analogy that I use is there's a light inside of you. There is blue sky inside of you. There is the potential for you to do something extraordinary with your life. You just have to clear away the negative thoughts and the limiting beliefs and the stories that you've created about yourself, about how you can't do it. Those are the clouds that are keeping you from seeing what's inside of you. Get rid of those things, recognize you for who you are and start putting yourself out there, not from fear, but from a position of faith, believing that this thing called love, serve, grow actually works if you work it. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. I love that. I'm going to steal it. I'm stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I respect your time so much. And just so you all know, Bob actually is going to do something super special. He, because of all the craziness and he wants to be the light, get rid of the clouds, the blue sky, <laughs> he's actually opening up his leadership and coaching development program. He can tell you more about it for free until the end of April. This is no strings attached, no credit card required. And so if you are feeling very drawn to what he's saying, if you're feeling like, wow, I need some more Bob Heilig in my life. Um, two things, I would love for you to explain that. And then I, I want you to, I know I respect your time, so we got to wrap this up, but I would love for you to give maybe one last thing that if, if somebody just heard it, maybe it'll shift everything in their life. Um, maybe just something that's on your heart. Yeah, no pressure, right? Yeah, no. Just share, Bob, can you share that one statement that's going to change all of my listeners' lives? You know what? Listen, this is my podcast. That's what I want. I uh, want to have the bomb drop. I want to have the heavens open. Give it to me, Bob. So, yeah. So, look, somebody that really, um, you know, we teach leadership and we have this thing called Love, Serve, Grow. And knowing that right now, there's never been a time ever that this has been more appropriate. I know that we have coaching and a, and a program that we've created that literally will change people's lives because it's like exactly what you need right now. So thinking about how can I practice what we preach here and really step up big time and serve this profession, we decided that we would open up, uh, it's called the Legacy Leadership Academy. It's a leader, it's a 12 month leadership certification program for network marketers. Um, it's unlike any other program that I know in the world, but I know it's so good. It'll help everybody. We decided to just let people join for free. Like it's not a, like you got to enter your credit card or we're going to upsell you once you like, it's literally just you sign up. It's free till the end of April. You get access to all of our program content, our live coaching that we do in a group. We have a mobile app that you can download for free. All the content and training is right on the palm of your hand. So like if you're home with the kids feeding the baby, you got your phone out, you're watching our training. Um, and all you have to do is go to LegacyLeadershipAcademy.com forward slash free. Um, LegacyLeadershipAcademy.com forward slash free. I'll so if you, show notes, so yeah, it's, it's joint, like no matter when you're listening to this, if you're listening on April 29th, you can join, you'll get a couple of days for free. So on April 30th, it's free till then. Um, one of the first things we're going to have people do, we've created a leadership assessment. It's actually a, a quiz where we'll tell you we have this framework we created called the five phases of network marketing leadership. We'll tell you which phase you're in and we give you a specific action plan to grow yourself as a leader. Um, so if, even if you have nobody on your team, you're perfect for this program because we start from the very beginning. Um, so definitely go check that out and feel free to spread the word to your teams. I think we, we just announced it last week. We've already had like 8,000 people join in like four That's days. Awesome. So it's been pretty crazy. I had a, uh, one of our big leaders actually joined your, well, a lot of leaders joined your academy uh, uh -huh. before it, when it, when it wasn't free. And even that little quiz you just mentioned was yeah. tremendous for her. Um, and, and this is not, you know, Bob did not ask me to, uh, to say this, but it changed her entire business because she was stuck in, I don't remember which her, what her profile was, but it's something that was, she was not recruiting because of it. Yeah. And as soon as she wrapped her mind around the place that she actually leads from, um, it shifted everything for her. So it, yeah. was, it, was, it was, yeah, I mean, look, everybody, everybody says their program's different. I'll just let you join and figure out and you decide for yourself. I mean, what we do is very different. Um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, definitely go check that out. Spread the word to your teams in terms of like a final parting statement. I, I, I'll share this. And this is, I think a great way to summarize a lot of what we've been talking about like a lot of how people are struggling with these issues of unworthiness and am I deserving? Am I good enough? I think it's important to say this and understand this. You will never in your life be more worthy of what you want than you are right now in this very moment. You will never be more worthy of the things that you want than you are right now. It is very important to understand that because a lot of people have this false belief that things will be better when they get there. Mm -hmm. Wherever there is a rank, a level of income, quitting their job. And what I've learned in my life, and this was a really big realization for me, it never gets better. It only gets bigger. And if you are somebody that is driven by these feelings of unworthiness, when you get there, it's gonna be so much worse for you. 
Mm. Because you're going to spend years of your life trading off your happiness and joy, trying to create something that you think will solve a problem you have, only to realize that there's no amount of money in the world that will ever make you feel more worthy or, or good enough. And you'll beat yourself up even worse because you feel that way, given your success. And you will now be from a place of fear, so afraid to lose what you've created, you won't even allow yourself to enjoy it. I see that happen so many times. So here's the, here's the life-changing shift. Just acknowledge that you're worthy today. Just, just realize that all the things you really want, which are the emotions, and the, they come from inside of you. They don't come from outside of you. And, that, and that's what love is all about. If you can start from a foundation of love and giving it to yourself first, everything else becomes effortless. The things that you, I'm going to make air quotes, the things that you have to do in your business that you hate are things that you get to do right? This is a gift that we've been given. This is a gift that we have to offer. We, we get to prospect every day. We get to do Facebook lives. Like, are you kidding me? We can get paid to change people's lives, but you'll never see it that way unless you get outside of yourself. And all of that starts from that place of just acknowledging your own worth. I love that. You will never be more worthy of the things you want than, than you are right now. Just ah, so good. Thank you so much, Bob. I love that. And if you got value from this, I know you did, but make sure I'll tag all of Bob's stuff in the show notes so you can check it out. It's because you might spell his name wrong. I don't know. Maybe you're not. <laughs> your, your virtual upline. You can't forget that. Your virtual upline. There you go. But I will tag all of that. Uh, make sure you guys screenshot this, share it. Make sure you tell a friend. I think there was so much value in here. I know half of you are crying right now. So hopefully you pulled off the road, got off the treadmill, <laughs> um, but do understand you are worthy. And thank you so much for just your, your messaging constantly of love and positivity. I just think the world needs a lot of that. And uh, that's why I'm so thankful to have had you on here today. You are amazing. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much, Bob. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It has been a blast.